I'm Carolyn Canock from Lake Ponderay Waterkeeper. It's amazing to think of all the history connected with Lake Ponderay. Our lake is over thousands of years old and has lived through many significant changes and events in our world. We often don't think of lakes as temporary, but in terms of geologic time, most lakes are considered pretty young. This is because it usually takes hundreds to thousands of years for a lake to mature and eventually completely fill in. During this time, tributaries and flood events flow into the lake from around the watershed and bring with them sediment and other debris. When lakes are first formed, they often have rocky bottoms and very little sediment present in the lake bed. When the addition of sediment and nutrients over time changes, the conditions of the lake and consequently the ecosystem within the lake. Therefore, as a lake ages, the chemical, physical, and biological parameters of the lake also change. For our next chapter in our lake ecology course, we're going to talk about the life cycle of a lake and how lakes can age over time. Many lakes go through a natural aging process defined by trophic states. The trophic state is often measured by nutrient availability, especially pertaining to nitrogen and phosphorus. In general, a trophic state refers to the biological production of plant and animal life occurring in a lake and is measured based on dissolved oxygen levels, clarity of the water, amount of plants in the lake, and nutrient levels in the water. Nutrient levels, or availability, is often correlated to the amount of plants and algae present in the lake since plants need these nutrients to grow. As a lake ages, nutrient levels increase, plants and algae increase, and the lake fills in with sediment and other organic material, such as when these plants die and float to the bottom of the lake. The three main trophic states pertaining to lakes are oligotrophic, mesotrophic, and eutrophic. The first trophic state is correlated with a young or newly formed lake. Oligotrophic lakes, or lakes low in nutrients, are defined by deep, clear water, rocky and sandy bottoms, and very little plants and algae. There is generally low productivity and low nutrient levels. This results in high dissolved oxygen content. Plus, the clear water allows for light to penetrate deep into the water. These lakes are often considered pristine and are ideal for swimming or boating. These conditions are also usually great for trout fishing, since trout like cold, clean water. As more sediment is washed into the bottom of the lake, it ages into a mesotrophic state, or a middle-aged lake with medium levels of nutrients. There are now more nutrients available in the water, and more plants are able to grow. The water is still relatively clear, with minimal algae and some beds of submerged aquatic plants. This creates a wider variety of habitats and therefore supports a wider variety of aquatic life. These lakes are often great for fishing and are still good for swimming. Finally, once a lake becomes significantly filled in with sediment, it shifts from a mesotrophic lake to a eutrophic lake, or a mature lake with high levels of nutrients. These lakes generally have shallow, murky water with soft, muddy bottoms from all the sediment that has washed in over the years. Eutrophic lakes are also very productive and have high levels of nutrients, which supports abundant plant life. However, these lakes usually have lower levels of dissolved oxygen due to the warmer water and high productivity levels using up the available oxygen. Available habitat and the organisms living in eutrophic lakes are quite different than in oligotrophic lakes. There are more warm water fish present, such as pike and largemouth bass, and more water birds present. These lakes aren't as good for swimming or boating due to how many plants are present, but since they're so productive, they support a much more diverse community of organisms. In conclusion, a lake's trophic state can tell us a lot about the habitat in the lake's ecosystem and about the organisms that live in and around the lake. It's important to note that a lake's trophic state is not interchangeable with its water quality. However, a lake rapidly becoming eutrophic due to humans overloading the ecosystem with nutrients from pollution and sedimentation, can be unhealthy for the lake and its inhabitants. Later on, we'll learn about how we can do our part to reduce our impact on a lake's life cycle and prevent excess nutrients and sediment from entering our waterways. Preserving our Earth's ecosystems 
is key to keeping our natural resources and our communities healthy. For our next chapter in our lake ecology course, we're going to be building our very own lake ecosystem using our lake model. Once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Thank you.